In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange for a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, Yes. He has no, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Forever, 
I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Blessed are the people who know the joyful shout in the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel, our King. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Victor, go get your investments on, please. Friends, um, we we have uh, in this Gospel here for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time um, something that a lot of people struggle with, uh, especially the first part of the Gospel. Um, uh, family relationships can be very, very challenging. Uh, uh, you, there's that saying, you know, you don't get to pick your family. Um, and everybody has free will and intellect, and they can choose to reason rightly or wrongly, and they can choose to do the right thing or choose to do the wrong thing. They can have an attitude of, 
helpfulness and goodness and sincerity, or they can be very self-centered and think very much in the way of the world and not according to the way of the kingdom of God. And um, I know, you know, uh, uh, we all have those kinds of struggles in one way or another in our family with various family members, particularly the ones who perhaps get off track. But I, um, I think uh, it's very important that our Lord is not telling us to reject or con condemn our family. We have to be real clear about that. He wants us to be a light to them. Okay? If they walk away from us because we're devout followers of Jesus Christ, then they walk away. And we can try to reason with them, but, but we, we are not to... Uh, uh, coerce them or be forceful, you know, particularly with adults. Um, children obviously need guidance. But, you know, what can so often happen with children is if the guidance is heavy handed and sort of very absolutist without helping them to understand, then depending on the way the, the, the personality is, the way a person's wired, and the way that they're given to think. They may become, uh, you know, resentful and dig in. Uh, I've, you know, I've known people who are adults who have never matured past that sort of adolescent rebellion and resentment. Uh, I remember having an encounter with a, a priest one time who was very much uh, 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 about the, the post-Vatican II church, you know, the her hermeneutic of rupture. And he very bitterly complained to me that as a kid, you know, that Latin was forced down their throat. And he never got over it. And uh, I listened patiently, but it was, I wanted to say, grow up, man. Grow up. Get over it. And at the same time, though, we have to be very cognizant about the way we live out our discipleship to the Lord, because if we're Again, if we're too forceful and so forth, and uh, if, if people are, especially the young, but, but if they're not taught the Lord's love for them, and their heart and their soul is not sensitized to that love of the Lord, and to recognize their need for His help and His mercy, and, and that he, is, he wants them to succeed. He's not, wait, he's not standing by waiting for them to mess up just to whack them, you know? But rather, he wants them to have the fullness of happiness and have that, you know, to foster within them that supernatural outlook that looks to the ultimate meanings and the ultimate fulfillment of our life, not just the short term, but the big picture. And that to learn how to delay gratification and how to make offerings out of love, but also to see the signs of God's love that are present in our life in the here and now. It's so beautiful to me so often to encounter children who are so sincere and sometimes out of the mouths of the children can be uh, where you can see they're working out their understanding, they're being catechized they're learning about Jesus they're learning about suffering and death and so forth and uh, it happens not infrequently you know that a child is with their family mass, a very young child and they look up and they see Jesus on the crucifix and they say, thank you, Jesus. And sometimes the children reflect back to us spiritual insights that are so, so powerful that help bring us back, you know, to sort of that, that innocence of childhood before we became uh, uh, impacted by the negative things we experience in the world and the cynicism and the sarcasm of the world. Um, and so, uh, th this is something that's very difficult, but the, uh, can be very difficult. Not always, but can be very difficult. But our Lord makes it very, very clear that the primacy must be discipleship to Him, because He is our divine lover. He is the one and only Savior. And uh, perhaps if, if, if we were equals, in conversation, and I, I said these things to you, 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me after, uh, after me is not worthy of me. Uh, uh, you, you, you think I was being very arrogant. But our Lord is not arrogant. He is truthful. He is truthful about who he is. He is the incarnate God, truly God and truly man. And he comes to bring us the windfall of our lifetime. He comes to carry out his mission, his saving mission, that is so full of the power of his divine love and mercy and his will to save, to bring us to share in his glory. It is not a selfish mission, it's a selfless mission. His exaltation was an exaltation onto the cross of suffering for the redemption of humanity. So as to gain for us the means of forgiveness for our sins and redemption. You and me and all people who say we're sorry and then we go and we sin over and over and over again. He doesn't wait for us to get it right. He is generous and benevolent. And he wants to inspire us to put first the things of the kingdom of heaven and the things of salvation. And that is to teach us to be humble and submit to him and to choose to make him the sovereign over our lives and every aspect of our lives. The second pass, pa, uh, portion of this gospel uh, about sort of whoever receives uh, you talking to his uh, apostles, the twelve, whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me, receives the Father who receives God. Whoever receives a prophet because a prophet receives a prophet's reward. That's what is, is, is reported to us here in the first reading. And Elisha uh, rewards in a very beautiful way this, this woman and her husband who have no children who are advancing in age. And he's able to give them a new lease on life. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. That's fair. But the windfall, my friends, is whenever and whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple. What does this mean? What is this about? It means supporting the apostle. It means supporting the saving mission of Jesus Christ. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. Now, this doesn't mean supporting errors. It doesn't mean supporting moral breakdown that is being pushed in our times. It doesn't mean supporting ideologies and movements that are so destructive and counter to the gospel. It doesn't mean supporting a utopian worldview that worships a false god. It means investing in the kingdom of heaven and worshiping the one true God who is love and who is truth and who shows it by his selfless service to humanity and in pouring his life out on the cross. A cross to which we are called. It may only be the cross of bringing a little cup of cold water to a disciple, but it is really bringing our life at the service of the gospel according to the vocation that we have received. Every one of us has a vocation to holiness. That's universal. Every human person has a vocation to holiness. And that, we were brought to just simple, basic, catechetical realities. Remember this. Baptism makes us children of God by adoption, the family of God. It makes us heirs to the kingdom. It makes us participate in the life of grace. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. 
who are participating in the life of God. And our life's journey then is to live in that harmony with the life of the Trinity and the mission of the church that the Lord established for, not only for our salvation but that of the whole world. This is not a time for us to become despondent and negative and depressed and, and, and uh, 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 pessimistic about the condition of the world. Yes, there are such huge problems. But let us remember that we have the Savior, Jesus Christ. We have God. We have the aid of His grace and His sacred power. And we have the means that the Lord gives us through the whole deposit of faith and morals to keep us rightly focused and to be directed rightly and led by the Good Shepherd. And that can never be taken away from us. And we have the gift of the seven sacraments. And we have the spirit of uh, the, 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 the corporal and spiritual works of mercy of which we are beneficiaries and uh, in which we are called to be benefactors. It's up to you and me to rebuild society. No matter how far down it falls and even if it all burns to ashes, then the phoenix will rise up. Because God cannot be conquered. He cannot be undone. You are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. To announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness. Into his wonderful light. So let us, my dear people of God. My fellow Christians become more completely what we are. I believe in one God. Amen. Proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of death and the life of the Lord to come. We who are baptized and have died and risen with Jesus Christ in the strength and joy of this new life, let us lift up our prayers to the Lord. That all who are not baptized will, through the preaching of the church, be led to accept the grace and call of God to receive his new life, we pray to the Lord. That Christians who serve us in government may place their loyalties to Jesus Christ Above every political and personal loyalty, we pray to the Lord. For the strength to welcome Jesus Christ as he comes to us in the stranger, the sick, the imprisoned, and the unborn child, we pray to the Lord. 
that the millions of refugees in the world may receive brotherly love and concrete aid from all Christians, we pray to the Lord. For those who are far from the sacraments, that with trust in God's forgiveness, they may confess their sins and join us again at the table of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. For all in our parish and families who are sick, especially those made ill by the coronavirus, for those who give care to them, and for our departed loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Father, as you answer our prayers, grant that we may love you above all people and things, and come to the eternal joys of your kingdom. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Sanctus Dominus Deus 
sama ho, plenis un celi et terra, gloria tua, osana in excelsis, benedictus, cui benedicien nomine domini, osana in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tua, Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you have willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, his assisting Bishop George, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Er hipsum et cum ipso, er in ipso, est tibideo patrio mitodenti, in unitati spiritus sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. On you stay, qui tollis peccatandi, miserere nobis. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Um, right after Mass, uh, we'll, we'll process to the, the we'll process, uh, uh, actually we'll process out the main aisle, but um, right after Mass, I will do the blessing, uh, the exorcism and blessing of salt. Uh, I already exercised and blessed the holy water uh, earlier today, and so there's a vat with the holy water near the baptistry. There are bottles that you can obtain for a $2 donation to take uh, holy water home with you that has been exercised and blessed and I but I will also now when I process out um, exercise and bless salt so that you can have that sacramental uh, in, for the spiritual protection of your homes and families I think it's very important that we make use of these sacramentals remember that the sacramentals help dispose us for the sacraments um, <clears throat> so you know uh, we're not selling salt and we're not selling holy water, all right? We're selling the container uh, to recoup our expenses and so forth, but uh, the sacramentals are not charged for, uh, if you, uh, but donations are accepted. Place, <coughs> um, I will be doing this at the two masses tomorrow, so people can come and place salt on the table in the entry of the church in front of the crucifixion seat. Um, and, uh, so we're making progress on our landscaping project. Put your roots down in Annunciation. On Saturday, July 11th, after the 8 a.m. Mass, please join us for Planting Day. Also, please see the parish website for legacy opportunities to sponsor and put your name on that of those you'd like that on, on that or those you'd like to honor or remember on one or more of the many plans available. Thank you to the many volunteers who've been helping prepare the grounds for the planting. They've really been out there three Saturdays working intensely and uh, doing a great job. It's really taking shape so beautifully. So thank you to everyone for that. Uh, Monday, June 29th, I invite you to attend Solemn Extraordinary for Mass at 7 p.m. for the celebration of the Solemnity of Saints Peter and St. Paul. The parish office will be closed on Friday, July 3rd in observance of the Independence Day weekend. Starting Sunday, July 5th, there will be a change in our coronavirus Sunday mass schedule. So, you know, I made it, uh, I modified the mass schedule during this time of the coronavirus. And so we have the vigil mass, we have two Sunday masses. Um, but after some experience, we didn't know how far to, well, before the experience, we didn't know how far out to space the masses because of the need to have everybody come back and sanitize the church after each mass. But we think that um, uh, instead of 11.30, 11 a.m. should give us ample time for the sanitizing of the church and um, the, next, uh, the attendees for the next mass to, to arrive. And so starting Sunday, July 5th, that's next Sunday, right? There will be a change in our coronavirus Sunday mass schedule. The current 11.30 a.m. mass will begin at 11. Please see the parish website for more information. Friends, also just a matter of housekeeping, so to speak, uh, with regard to reverence and keeping, uh, maintaining our church as a place of prayer. Um, uh, Please uh, refrain from entering into conversations, uh, open conversations when here in church. This is a house of prayer, and people need to be able to come and pray without interruption and distraction. Uh, we're leaving the, the door that o opens to the hallway, leading to the restrooms open so that people don't have to touch the handles and so forth. But that, that means that that's not a place to make telephone calls or have conversations out in the hallway or in the area of the restrooms either. So if you have to have a phone call or a conversation with somebody, please uh, step outside to take care of that 
and um, that way we can ensure that uh, people's right. You know, there's so few places people can go to have quiet, and particularly sacred places. There's so few churches people can go to to have quiet, to pray. And so uh, we want to preserve that here at Annunciation. I ask your help in maintaining uh, that kind of sacred silence here in the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Say, Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God review him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O glorious Prince, say, Michael, chief and commander of the heavenly host, guardian of souls, vanquisher of rebel spirits, servant in the house of the divine king and our admirable conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil. We turn to you with confidence and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Amen. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. In your hands I commend my soul. I offer to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. The prayer in time of epidemic, vouchsafe to hear us, O God, our only salvation, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God and ever Virgin, of thy blessed martyr Sebastian, and of all the saints, deliver thy people from the terrors of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. Be ye moved to pity, O Lord, at our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul, so that experiencing thy forgiveness, we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech thee, O Lord, grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee, and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal hearts may recognize that these scourges proceed from thine indignation, and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Duceto, Et Spes Nostra Salve. A Te clamamus, Exules Filii Eve, Hartem suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vanne. Heita hero, adocata nostra, idos tuos misericordes oculos, ad nos convertem. Et ye Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, ostende. O clemens, O Exorciso te creaturis sali, creatura salis, per Deum vivum, per Deum bellum, per Deum santo, per Deum quite, per Eliseum profeta, minacum miti, iusit, ut sanaretur sterilitas acque, ut efficiares sal exorcitatum in salutem credentium, 
May these omnibus humentibus te sanitas anime corporis et te fugia calquidis scelant a loco, in cui aspersum fuertis, fueris omnes fantasia nequitia vel vestutia diabolice fraudis, omnisque spiritus immundus adjuratus per eon qui venturus est judicare vivus et mortus et seculum per iniem. Amen. Oremos, immensam clemenciam tuam omnipotens eterne Deus, humiliter imploramus, ut han creaturum sales, quam in usum generis humane tribuisti, benedicere et santificare tua pietate dignieris, ut sit omnibus sumensibus salos mentes et corporis, et qui quid ex eo tactum vel respersum fuere cariat omne immunditia, omnique impugnazione spiritales nequitie. Per Dominum Nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tuum, qui te convivet et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Deo gratias. Prosit ad unibus singulis. Amen.